first round matches to go. We'll see all of those this evening. For the rest of the afternoon, though, well, it's quarter-final places at stake. I think, Chris, it's fair to say a tough match to call, although you have to make the Netherlands favourites. Yeah, I'd certainly make the Netherlands favourites, and uh, I think by the bookies they are. They've got them favourites. Team Netherlands. But Winston. Finland are very dangerous. Obviously, Petri's won this tournament before, so he knows how to win. I think Kasper needs to tighten up a little bit on his positional play. He did make quite a few errors in his last match, and uh, he won't get away with it against the Netherlands. Yes, I think he was guilty of perhaps the worst shot of the entire tournament so far. Failing to get position from six to seven, I recall, late on. Generally, though, I don't think it was a, a bad performance from him. I thought it was a very solid performance from Petri Makadon. And now, as you say, they've got a match under their belts. Maybe we'll see them blossom. Yeah, for sure. I can see this match going uh, probably 7-4, 7-5 to Holland. Well, a dry break there, first break from Mark Biesterbosch, and he's left Finland in with a shot and the one ball. By the way, if you're wondering where Carl Boys is, he's gone off practising. Moonlighting. Yeah, Casper needs to be a little bit careful. He could do it dropping the one in dead weight thin and the cue ball cannon in the seven to hold for the two. Yeah, and he played it thick. He needs to hit that one thin. It's not too bad. Niels is going away from the two ball, so he's going to leave a tricky two if he can cut this one in. Extension, please. Well, that's a great shot. Decided on the bank there on the one to give himself better position on the two. Played it perfectly. Although Fine has got the better career CV of the two Dutch players, by far the better. It has to be said that Mark Bosch de Bosch played very nicely in the first round during their 7 4 win over Bosnia and Herzegovina. And uh, Mark has a little party trick when he plays pool. He can actually break and he can hit the roof. I've seen him do it in pool clubs, which He's roughly about 10 feet in the air off the pool table. Perfect position there for uh, Niels. Just going to pot this five ball stun over four or five inches and leave a half ball six into the top right hand corner. The five ball caused him problems in the third rack yesterday. The Dutch broke around the first two racks and then he missed quite a simple five ball and that one wasn't the cleanest. on that seven ball there as well it skidded into the near knuckle but luckily for Niels just dropped in that bottom cushion has been very lively but coming off a couple of rails really helped matters 
Tim and the Dutch have West made an early West. statement. They took that rack really nicely. All started with a double from Niels Fine, and they went from there. Mike Bosch de Bosch is a former European 10 ball champion. As for Niels Fein, well, his list of career achievements far too lengthy to chronicle. I think the most extraordinary is the fact that he's a 13 time Moscone Cup player for Europe and he's four times the most valuable player, the MVP. Three years in succession from 2013 to 2015. Now, the pressure. It's a white-hot cauldron of pressure the Moscone Cup, and to be MVP for three consecutive years, that's extraordinary. Yeah, he's certainly one of the guys that you want in your team when uh, the heat's on, when it's close, and everybody feels the pressure. You've got two or 3,000 people screaming in your ear. He's definitely one of the guys that you want out there. So having played in 13 Moscone Cups, he's third on the all-time list for Europe. Only Mika Eminen from Finland with 15 and Ralph Suke with 17 have break. appeared in more. Netherlands to break. Leading one. It's good. It's good. Neil's deciding to break from the uh, right hand side of the table from where he's looking. This side seems to break better. There you can see, two ball, three ball, and absolutely perfect on the one. So, Chris, you're playing later on today against Belarus. You'll be getting pointers watching this. Yeah, we've just been watching where to break from, really. I was, I was out there last match supporting the ladies from Great Britain. B and you could see that the top rail was bouncing and the right hand side of the table was certainly breaking better than the left. That's a bad shot there from Mark. He was trying to cannon the four ball and he kind of deaccelerated through the shot. We saw Jeffrey De Luna pot a ball similar to this in the previous match. That was a seven ball. And he scratched. Extension, please. The seven just reached the pocket. He will reached another pocket. Yeah, and he actually played that with his opposite hand as well. He played that with his right hand. It's a tricky little shot, this, because, as we said earlier, this top rail is bouncing, so position isn't guaranteed. There is a pot. What an opening this is for Finland. Can't see too much going wrong here, Phil. Everything's in the open. I think the toughest shot is from the six ball to the seven. The old commentator's curse. No one's immune. Absolutely no one. Yeah, he's trying to force an angle and not the nine ball over towards the corner, trying to do too much in the same shot. No reason to do it, should have just made the four ball, five ball. And that's going to hurt them, especially if Mark pots this. Nice shot there, good control and this is really going to hurt Finland because that was a glorious opportunity. Yes, Matikainen, as we've mentioned, did show some signs of weakness in the previous round. And I'll tell you what, Chris, he was well up for this. When I went down for breakfast this morning, he was already in his team uniform. 
Yeah, that's not something I'd do just in case I spilt the beans on my shirt. In pool, when your opponents make a bad mistake, the key thing is to take full advantage of it, to rub salt into the wound, and that's what the Dutch did there. The Netherlands lead Finland by two racks to zero. It all came down to the mistake from Kasper Matikainen. The five ball, well, in the end, it went well wide, didn't it? Yeah, I think he was trying to pop the nine in the same shot, and I don't know why. It was a, an easy shot on the five, and I think he just overthought the shot instead of just making the five ball. But that could come back to haunt him. You can see him there shaking his head, negativity. They really hurt, especially early in the match, because so often a mistake like that can set the pattern. Yeah, and you can see now he's still shaking his head and he needs break. to forget that as quick as that possible. Break. Leading by two racks to now. What normally happens, Phil, when you make a mistake like that, your opponents break and run the next rack. It happens so often in pool. been a little Push bit lucky ball. there because that was a good break just the eight ball getting in the way of the cue ball the break's not been kind this week Phil normally we see two three balls flying in nearly every break and this week we're, we're getting a lot of dry breaks and the odd ball dropping I always remember a final in Rotterdam in the very early days of the World Cup of Pool. All week, the table had been playing beautifully and breaking so favourably. It was in 2007, China against, funnily enough, Finland. And what they did, they put a dry ice machine in there to create some extra atmosphere. And that dry ice machine changed the entire characteristics of the table. And they went from being able to knock in balls off pretty much every break to a succession of dry breaks. Your choice, guys. So only a little difference in the atmospherics or the, the weather or whatever can make a huge difference in whether you're breaking off well or it goes messy. Yeah, a lot of people at home won't realise that, but the weather outside does make a huge difference. If it's warm, the table plays more or less perfect, but when it rains, it plays what we players call wet. So the table is very hard to control the ball off the rails and you don't get the same reaction on the cue ball. Saw so Neil's play a push out there and he's obviously got something in his mind what he's going to play. I think he's going to try and spin the cue ball with right and spin all the way around the table in behind the four and the nine. Yeah, it double kissed. That's what he was trying to do, but he's had another result. But he may be in trouble after this one. You never see much emotion from Niels. Part of the reason why he's called the Terminator.
Well, that's not a bad shot, but he's gave Casper a nice opportunity here to get the snooker. Try and clip the one ball very thin, the touch of left-hand spin. Come back across where the cue ball is now and back in behind the nine and four. It's all about the pace of the shot is this one. And he's hit that all wrong, hit it too thin and it's not the worst result. Ample time to recover, but right now his composure is leaving a lot to be desired. Extension, please. Yeah, it's very important that Finland can get a, a rack on the board. Oh, what a shot that is. What a shot that is. He's been very unlucky to hook himself behind the six ball there. But one thing Mark Bisterbosch is very good at is using the jump cue. He's only about three inches, two, three inches away from this six, but as long as he gets it over the six, he should make the two. It's not a difficult jump shot. Well, he's overcut it. How would you overcut that two ball? the elevation that was the seemingly tough part of the shot not the actual part nice shot there from Petri controlled the cue ball well now he's in prime position yes and now this is a test that Matty Kynan has to pass okay because he can queue across the centre pocket didn't want to be too close to the rail and now he's got a series of stop shots just wants to pot this five stop the cue ball dead and be dead straight on the six in the top right hand corner That's a decent shot there. He could have done with the cue ball coming a bit further over, but he'll take it and you wouldn't think that Petri would miss this nine ball. Well done, Petri Makinen and Kasper Matikainen. They're on the board, they've opened their account. Still though, Netherlands are in front at 2-1.
the first quarter-final place in the 2021 Before World Cup of Pool is up for grabs. Finland trying breaking off in rack four, trying to equalise against the Netherlands because they trail at the moment 2-1. Well, there's a lot of power in that break. Absolutely smashed them, but no luck, unfortunately. No clear shot, the one. I'm just contemplating what kind of safety shot they're going to play. Patrick Mackinnon, the senior member of the side. He's only 32 years of age, but he's been there and done it, certainly in terms of the, the World Cup. Yeah, he's going to try and spin the one over and try and kill the cue ball behind the four and the five ball. Well, he's gone for the bank. That was very risky. There was quite a few simple safety shots he could have played there. And for some reason, he's decided to go for the bank. Extension, please. Nice shot there by Mark. Nice position on the three ball. And once again, a very good opportunity for Holland. I watched them practicing for a while this morning and they seemed intense doing that. Well, I do know that Niels is one of the big practices of all the pool players when, when we played the uh, Championship League a few weeks ago. There was only me, really me and him that was practising every day. Landed a little bit short there. Could have done with overrunning the cue ball slightly. You may see Niels just draw the cue ball back to the side cushion. Is he looking to spin it round? I'm not quite sure. Well, he's going to spin it. And that is perfect. An advanced shot from a master. And the decisive nine ball in the rack is about to be deposited. That lens wants the rack. Nicely done. The Finns went for what Chris accurately described as a risky bank. It didn't come off. In fact, 
from bang to bust because they lost the rack and Netherlands now lead 3-1. Yes, 3-1 to the Netherlands. Alvin Ocean joins me again. Um, I want to talk to you about Niels, Alvin. Power and precision in his shooting there. And he's just showing his class. Yeah, definitely. And uh, he was one of the players... Uh, he was feared by many, many players for a very, very long time. And he was the man to beat for, like, ages, you know. And uh, that's probably why they call him the Terminator. Yeah, he doesn't want your clothes, your boots or your motorcycle. It's just that... <laughs> that look he gives on the table, quite f he's such a lovely guy off it, but he, he, he looks fearsome. Yeah, he always gives 110%, it doesn't matter if it's practice or tournament, so uh, that's what made him that good, uh, I believe. The Dutch look good, don't they? They look strong so far, they look determined. On, on my paper, um, they're definitely going for the title here, and uh, if they keep on playing like that and breaking like that, they have a very big chance. Very big chance indeed. Yeah, let's go back to the match. It's currently 3-1 to the Netherlands. Of all the stalwart teams in the history of the World Cup of Pool, I don't think any of them have come quite so close to winning it without actually doing so. Can the Dutch get over the final hurdle this time? Yeah, and that's another good break there from Niels. Didn't make the intended ball in the corner, but the three went in and he'll take that. And he's got a clear shot, the one. Very wide stance, Chris. Does that create the power? Yeah, when breaking, you need a, a wide stance because you tend to push your body forward into the shot. Where obviously, if he was playing snooker, you'd be square on the shot, you know, and there'd be less body movement. But that's not Mark's best shot. Yeah, it wasn't as though he was playing into a small gap there. Yeah, it's really piece. badly timed the screw back. Yeah, D accelerated. You can see him there. He's, he's, he's a little bit tight on the shot, just moving his arm backwards and forwards there. and. You could tell the way the cue ball stopped where it did, that it did de-accelerate de on the shot. Niels has left that a little bit short. He'll take it, but we know that this top rail has been bouncing. And this is one of them shots where you do need to slightly de-accelerate to kill the cue ball. That's a brilliant shot. He's held that very well. Now in perfect position on the five. Natural posi position to the six. And you can only see this rat going one way. Chemistry is a big deal in this tournament and these two have got a really good friendship and a good working bond Bosch de Bosch holds Fine in very high regard Fine completely trusts his partner yeah that's a good combination Phil Not always been the case. We've had some pairings in the past who don't see eye to eye, but it never really seems to work. Yeah, there's been one or two where you wasn't sure whether there were going to be some afters. Netherlands. Team Holland tapping knuckles. And the reason for that, they forge on to a 4-1 lead. You know, in the break, I was just looking at Niels Fine's record over the years. And 
what a CV it is. I think 2014 was his best year. He won the World Nine Ball Championship and was also crowned World Straight Ball Champion as well. When you consider he won the World Tour Masters twice in 2013 and 2018. European nine ball champion twice, European straight pool champion on a preposterous seven occasions. And he's won ten times on the Euro Tour. Now, Chris, you know how tough that is. Yeah, the Euro Tour is very difficult to win. Not only are there so many great players, but the pockets are very generous. Therefore, all the players are very good. You know, if you do tighten up the pockets, sometimes it, it helps the better player. Well, just looking at the titles that he has won, he actually lost in the final of the World 8 Ball Championships to our co-commentator, Carl Boys. He did indeed, and in fact, he was runner-up in the World 8 Ball Championship in successive years, 2010 and 2011. A real all-rounder because in the World 10 Ball Championship, he's a former semi-finalist. That'll last to break. Yeah, Beating certainly an all-rounder and one of the greatest players that Europe's ever produced. Well, another good break, but he lost the cue ball. A lot of power. Well, the cue ball got kicked twice by the three and the two. But it's been slightly fortunate that he's left an open shot on the one. Not easy by any means. But if there's one man you want to play this, it's Niels Fyon. And what a shot that is. That's the shot of the match for me there, Phil. I was just thinking, I've seen him knock in this kind of pot so often, especially in those Moscone Cups when everything is riding on his shoulders and he just gets down and knocks them in as though they're over the pocket. Yeah, that was a brilliant shot there. And... Nice little shot there by Mark and in prime position once again. Looking good, Phil. Both you and I, before the start, Chris, were predicting a close-run thing. Maybe not. Well, this is the thing with winner breaks. No matter how good you can play, you might not get to the table. And Finland, had, they have had a few opportunities, but they've not taken them. And all that does is give your opponents confidence. You can clearly see they don't think they're going to miss a ball. I must say, though, I'm a fan of the winner breaks format because it's the purest form of the game, isn't it? Yeah, the thing is, you're never out of the match with winner breaks because you can be six, seven, eight behind and know that if you do get that chance, then you could run the match and seen it done a few times and done it a few times myself. Doesn't happen that often. I do remember, I think it was Ralph Suke in the European Championships many years ago. He got to the final and I think he played Oliver Ortman. And he beat him 10 0, and Oliver Ortman never played a shot. That would have made him very happy. Look at this. The Dutch are rampant. They lead Finland by five racks to one.
on lavalla. Menee lavalla ja kestää tänne kolme. Tuo vaan natit on tehty oikein Ei oo omaa puolesta, vaan jopa tuon nakista on tehty. Mulla on tolla jo kyllä niin kummat kerralla. Tuonne mukaan taas. This year's World Cup off pool is played behind closed doors, but that doesn't mean to say the fans can't have a presence here. Send in the photographs and they will be beamed into this arena. We do have spectators, though. A lot of competitors popping into the arena to see the action. And what they're seeing here, Chris, is the Dutch enjoying one-way traffic. Yeah, and what I have noticed is every time they've broke, or near enough every time, the same ball has gone in the same top left-hand corner pocket. So the back ball on the break is going straight in that top corner from where Niels has just broke from. Be interesting to see if it goes in the next break. Well, he's over at this one. He needs some luck. He needs to kiss the three and land on it. Well, that's that's a poor shot there. He's overran the ball by a good five, six feet. May see Niels play a little snooker here behind the six, but got to be careful because the cue ball's so close to the three that he may double hit it or the three may not hit a rail. Extension, please. Well, what a shot that is. That was a very good shot, and it's not the worst of results. So hard to judge the potting angle when cue ball and object ball are so close together. Yeah, not only that, he was aiming down the table, so he was aiming into what we call a blind pocket. It makes the shot a lot more difficult, but this is no gimme. Unless you hit it like that, what a shot he's played there. Straight in the out of the pocket. Well, we saw the Savlakins put on a great performance but this is a very close second Phil I agree sending out quite a statement the Dutch by the way Slovakia and Czech Republic that's the match that's up next that local derby and those two might be coming onto the table quicker than they anticipated What a trouncing this is so far. The Dutch, far and away the better team, and that's reflected in the scoreline. They lead 6-1.
Alvin, this is very impressive stuff from the Dutch right now. Yeah, definitely. It feels like a little bit like a deja vu from uh, Slovakia performance. Uh, they play incredible, they break incredible, so big. Does that make them favourites, in your opinion, for this tournament? Yeah, uh, I said already to Mario after we lost the match that uh, they're my favourite team uh, right now because they click together very well and uh, like you see here, they just incredible performance. This is the side they're beating Finland, who won seven racks to nil in the first round. Yeah, true. Um, they played Iceland. I think they uh, didn't play any World Cup of Pool before, so um, it was a little bit like a tester. But uh, yeah, I mean, you cannot do much when you just keep to stay in your seat. And obviously winning this gets them into the quarterfinals. It also gives them a day off tomorrow, a day to recover mentally as well. Yeah, of course, and also get some practice uh, day off. It's always nice to have uh, have some little bit of free time and and spend time with your with your partner together, have a good day off. So it's going to be nice for them. Abby, thank you. Netherlands on the hill. The eighth. Indeed, they are, but they will not be taking anything for granted with this winner breaks format, especially given the quality of the opposition. They want to finish this as quickly as they possibly can. And the seven ball was going straight in that top corner pocket again. If we get another look at that, the seven was a back ball on the break, and it was the same in the last rack and previous two racks. The ball was flying in the top corner. Ball shot. Ball shot. Well, this is just the kind of table time that the Finns craved. And this is how, how quick the game can actually change, especially with winner breaks. All it takes is a few balls off the break and a couple of lucky shots. And they're back in the match. Do not understand the shot he's played there. I think he's overran it. Why on earth he would draw that cue, off, cue ball off two rails is beyond me. He should have just played the cue ball straight off the bottom cushion with a touch of left hand side. Back up the table, he would have had a perfect angle on the five to get to the six. I think that was a little bit of inexperience he, he's shown there. Extension, please. Well, they can dink this with a bit of left-hand spin around the seven, but he's looking at the jump cue. Just got to jump over the edge, but he's got to be careful. Cue ball could go off the table. And yet again, another missed opportunity. It looks like the finish for the finish. Yeah, we said it earlier at the top of the show that Casper had made a few mistakes in his last match and Extension, please. the opponents didn't punish them, but the Dutch have played brilliant and punished nearly every single opportunity. One glimmer of hope here, not quite a full pocket for this five. But it's in nevertheless. Maybe 90% of the pocket was available there and when Fine's got that, he's going to knock it in. Well, you've got to say this has been an absolute brilliant performance from Holland. Hardly put a foot wrong. And 
Oh, these guys are going to take some beating. This for Holland, Netherlands to reach the quarterfinals of the World Cup for the fourth time in this tournament's history. And they're the first team into the quarterfinals this year. Comprehensive, all what? Fine and Bosch to Bosch win by seven racks to one.